Good morning, and how are you guys doing today? It's Tammy. To my Wisconsinites, please don't shovel. This this snow that's outside is heavy, it's wet, it's crap. Don't shovel it. I mean, I'm in the top, tip top shape of my life, and I ain't going out there to shovel. So if you have a heart condition or a medical condition, please do not shovel this shit. Um, you could just hurt yourself in the long run more. Now, what to expect? on your weight loss journey, especially if you have a lot of weight to lose. Um, the number thing I want to stress too is my heart failure peeps. Um, on my weight loss journey, I noticed after a while, about 120 pounds later, I was getting dizzy. I was getting tired. I was getting lethargic. I wasn't feeling myself. And I expressed this to the doctor. They never changed my medications as I was losing weight. Thank God the new cardiologist figured this out. They immediately cut my medications in half and I felt so much better. So if you're going on a weight loss journey and you have heart failure or even if with diabetes and you have to take insulin or any kind of medications, you guys, make sure you stay in contact with your doctor so that way they can adjust the dosages properly. Otherwise, you will end up over medicated like I was, all right? Now, yes. Now, um, being cold, as you guys know, I am constantly freezing. I am always wearing hats in my house, sweatshirts, you know, whatever. I do have my heat on. It's at 67, 68, so you can't say it's not cold in here. I am freezing. At 361 pounds, I have a lot of padding on that body. I have a lot of insulation. I'd go outside in my shorts and t-shirts and think it was the cat's meow when it was 20 degrees outside. Uh-uh. Not anymore. I mean, last year, 2007, 2017 is when I bought my first winter coat in, I can't tell you how long, um, gloves and hat to match, you know, with the scarf and everything like that. And I'm still cold. There's never a happy medium for me. Never. So just be prepared. It, not everybody goes through this, but you will, you might become cold, especially in the winter time. And Wisconsin's winters are pretty brutal. Another thing I noticed though, better skin. Now I'm genetically gifted where we don't have acne in our family. Um, maybe like, you know, like this one, maybe a pimple might pop up here and there, or maybe a blackhead here or there, but nothing severe. And I don't have those, that black, you know, looks like somebody punched you in the eye in the middle of the night. You wake up with like black and blue underneath your eyes. I don't have that. I don't have the puffiness. I mean, my eyes used to be like, I can't even, I can't even do it, but they would have, be like puffy, you know, I don't have that anymore. And people have noticed that my skin is a lot clearer and it glows and I just love it. Now my, um, weekly routine is three to four times a week. I use St. Ives, um, apricot scrub on my face. Um, it's an exfoliator and then I put lotion on afterwards and I go to bed. Um, yeah, that's basically all I do. Um, I don't do special creams. I don't do anti-wrinkle creams or whatever and all that shit. That's all I do. Um, so maybe I'm just like genetically gifted, but yeah, <laughs> clear skin. Another thing that I noticed is that I am more flexible. Boy, when I was in high school, I was flexible between dance, synchronized swimming, sports, all that stuff. And then I had my son, I gained 80 pounds and I just lost all my flexibility after that. But man, oh man, I can now take my toe, touch my nose. I can bend over and touch the floor and I can still breathe. Flexibility, I can't believe it. It is awesome. It's nice to have that back. The aches and pains are gone. When you're 361 pounds, that's, that's a big girl right there. And you're carrying a lot on your joints, on your knees, on your hips, on your back, on your shoulders, you know, your ankles, your feet. Of course they're going to hurt. But after losing the weight, the only problem I have is with my right knee. I have severe arthritis in it and a deteriorating, deteriorating um, meniscus. 
So it hurts once in a while, only when it gets like super cold. Like a couple of weeks ago, it was like negative 50 outside. Believe me, I felt it. But as far as like, I cannot tell if it's going to rain anymore. I cannot tell if it's going to snow anymore. You know how people say when they have arthritis, they can feel it. I don't have that. And the inflammation is gone. And I love that. Now, this one goes out to my keto peeps. You're going to have people on your journey posting on your Facebook messaging you, texting you, telling you, you're going to die from the ketogenic diet. You're going to have a heart attack. You're going to get diabetes. You're going to get cancer. You're going to get a And you're just like, now when you first start the ketogenic diet, you're going to be telling everybody. I did. You're going to be telling everybody that you're doing this diet and that you're losing weight and that you feel fabulous. And they're going to come back at you and tell you all that stuff. So what do you do? You have one or two options. You can either do what I did. Shoot them studies. Shoot them testimonials. Shoot them videos. Tell them, you know, over and over and over and over and over again. You know, and they still won't believe you. You'll never change their mind. Or you could just say, okay, thank you. I'll take that into consideration. Honest to God truth. I have been there. I have done that and I fired everything I had at them and it still didn't change their mind because they'll be firing stuff back at you. Just nod your head and say, okay, thank you. I'll take that into consideration. Just be prepared. Also, there's going to be people that are going to sabotage you that are going to want to sabotage you. Um, you may have kids, exes, you know, or um, husbands, wives, friends, whatever. Oh, look at this chocolate cake I made. Oh, look at this pizza I made. And you can't have none. Well, good for you. Have it. I felt like crap eating that stuff. How do you feel in the morning? What do you? What does your lipid panel look like? What does your, you know, fasting glucose look like? You know, how do you feel after you eat that crap? I know I feel good eating keto. I don't need that shit in my life. You know, and you're going to come across people like that. So what do you do? Just ignore it. Just ignore it. It's not worth the trouble. It just, it just isn't. And it's, it's a shame because I've seen in some support groups that people don't even mention that they're doing keto. And it's a shame because they will get that negativity. And keto is working for people, you guys. I cannot stress this enough. It is working. It's not only for weight loss. It's to get your health back. You know, and there are plenty of other diets that, that, uh, that are out there that do that too. But it's just, it's a shame that keto gets a bad rap. So just be prepared for the people that are not supportive of what you're doing, especially on the ketogenic diet. And also take into consideration, they just might be jealous. All right. So anyways, um, another thing and something that I go through and I seek counseling for is body dysmorphia. You're going to lose 170 pounds. You're going to lose 200 pounds and you won't be happy with your body. Why? Because of the loose skin. I'm going to tell you right now, if you have a lot of weight to lose, it's mostly genetic and how long you've been big. There's no elasticity left in my skin to bounce back like a rubber band. Um, mine has to be surgically removed. I need my arms done. I need um, a pep pependectomy, skin removal on my stomach. I need a lower body lift where they cut you 360 all the way around from belly button to belly button. Pull your skin up, cut the excess off, and then sew you back together. You know, um, yeah, that's not my idea of a good time, and it's something I have to live with. And I may not be able to have stomach surgery. Um, I have to pay for it out of my own pocket. So another tip that I want to give to you, if anybody out there has a lot of weight to lose, save for skin removal surgery because your insurance just may not cover it. Um, for me, because I do have, you know, heart problems, I would have to stay overnight in the hospital. It cost me anywhere from six to eight grand just to have my stomach done. So be prepared. You won't be happy with your end result, you know. Some people are just genetically gifted and they're young, you know, and their skin bounces back. There ain't no cream, no wrap, no lotion, no nothing that is going to bring back my skin. 
and it's unfortunate. Even though I did intermittent fasting for three years every single day and heavy weight training every single day, well, except for two days of the week, five days a week for about an hour, it's not going to come back. So start saving your money now. Okay, you're going to come across people with this. You're getting too skinny. I, You're losing too much weight, Tammy. You're getting too skinny. You don't need to lose anymore. Okay, you have to take this into consideration. When did you meet this friend? Did you meet this friend when you were fat? Or did you meet this friend when you were thinner? Or if you ever were thinner? Now, my thinner days was 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, middle school. And a lot of people have not seen me since middle school. And a lot of people didn't know me in middle school. So they've always seen that bigger girl. Right now, I am like at 7th, 8th, ninth grade weight. And, you know, a lot of my friends, when I was done losing weight, they're like, oh my God, Tammy, you're too skinny. You need to gain some weight back. They've never seen me skinny. You have to be your own judge. Now, I reached my goal weight of 190 pounds. And I thought I could take it a little bit farther. I thought it looked good, but maybe I thought I could take it, you know, just a little bit farther to 180. I got to 184. I started looking like a skeleton. Um, I looked deflated. I didn't look good. So I knew that my sweet spot was between 188 and 195. That's my maintenance. That is my maintaining level. So you have to be the judge. There is no one else that could tell you how to feel. You be the judge. Okay. Um, another thing, you're going to notice some imperfections. You might notice a little wrinkle here or there. You know, you might notice that this right here becomes bigger. I noticed right here that I got, you know, what do they call those? Um, when you smile, I can't think of it right now, but yeah, a dimple. A dimple. I have a dimple right here. Um, never had that before when I was 361. I mean, yeah, I could probably use a little facelift, I think. I don't know. But yeah, this decrease in here got a little bit deeper, but I look younger, which is fine by me. Um, another thing I noticed that, okay, so if you guys, <laughs> you guys see my nose, it's crooked. I never had a crooked nose at 361 pounds. And after I lost about 100, 120 pounds, I noticed it was crooked. I'm like, what in the hell happened? Well, one time I got dehydrated on my weight loss journey and I passed out. And I passed out. I was walking into the bathroom and I passed out, hit my head um, on the tub, Woke up with my feet, you know, in the air, you know, shit, towel bar was torn off the wall and all that crap. Well, when they took me to the hospital and gave me an MRI of my head, they noticed that I have a bone spur that needs to be removed to make my nose straight again. <clears throat> you know, and I've always wondered, why is my nose crooked? You know, you're going to notice little imperfections everywhere. Like... Another thing I noticed too, like, you know, when you go in the ladies room, you know, and you wash your hands and you put your hands underneath the dryer and your skin is just like a, like a wrinkly wave constantly going on. I never had that before at 361. Actually, it's kind of hilarious. I call it old age waves, but you know, it's, you know, you just notice little, you know, imperfections. Now, the last thing I want to mention is just be prepared. Just be prepared for some of these things. They may happen to you. They happen to me, especially the loose skin. It's still a mental thing. That's why I still seek counseling for it. It's there. There's nothing I can do. But, you know, I look like a happy, fun, Play-Doh, fun factory going on. But I would rather have 20 pounds of loose skin than be 361 pounds and be unhealthy again. I would not exchange it for the world. So I hope you guys have a great day. Um, I don't know if we're going to get any sun today, but we will see. Um, no shoveling to my heart peeps. Anybody with a heart condition, please do not shovel today. And everybody, I will see you tomorrow with tomorrow's weigh-in. Did I lose weight? Mm, I don't know. We will see. Bye, guys.